Welcome back to Ignition Core Studio. So today I'm going to be showing you guys how to paint a Blood Angels Captain from the Indomitus box set. I know my lighting isn't great, but you'll see how it works. Alright, let's get to it. Okay, so here we start with clipping the model, getting all the pieces off the sprue, and cleaning them up from the flash. I'm using a very sharp X-Acto knife to scrape off all the mold lines and pieces of sprue that were left over. Okay, so here I started off with a gray primer from Vallejo and I had used blue tack to put all the parts of the uh, model onto uh, some popsicle sticks and I'm testing out my primer and giving a nice little base coat to each part of the model. You always want to put a little bit of uh, airbrush thinner in there with the primer, just like a drop or two, and it really helps make a, make a nice difference and help it uh, flow. Here I switch out for the white. Okay, so in this part, I'm actually using the Festin Red with a little bit of paint uh, airbrush thinner, mixing it up inside the bowl there. And I'm going to be doing a base coat on the arms, backpack, and the uh, body itself. This is just the base coat, and then the, uh, the follow-up will be Blood Red, or uh, Evil Suns Red, for a highlight on each of these parts. I'm using about 25 uh, PSI from my compressor, uh, so that way it's not coming out too, uh, too much or too hard to cause splattering. Uh, here I'm actually clearing the nozzle by putting my finger over the, uh, the tip and uh, doing like a back pressure wash. Here comes the uh, Evil Sun Scarlet. Now I'm going, I'm kind of doing a uh, zenithal highlight by only coming at it from a upper angle to kind of give the uh, definition of, uh, of light hitting it.
Now I'm using a uh, fire uh, fire dragon uh, bright as a bit of a highlight. I'm mixing it in with the evil suns just a little bit so that way it kind of blends together. And again, doing it from a kind of like a 75 degree angle. Uh, again, just giving just a real small little highlight on the tops of the model. Okay, so here I kind of zoomed in a bit. I'm using a band in black to paint in all of the cloth, uh, tall bird areas, the front and back, as well as the joint uh, membrane that's in between the armor pieces. I'm using a pretty fine brush here. And as you can see, I have it uh, blue tacked onto this base. So that way I can actually remove it so I can get to the inside as well. Sorry, I forgot the uh, the camera was uh, zoomed in, so I wasn't exactly in frame at this point. I switch out for a, a more fine detail brush at this point because uh, my other brush was just a little bit too big. Here you can see I'm painting the joints. Again, just uh, trying to take my time, being very neat, and uh, focusing on the little cracks and crevices. I'm going to zoom out a little bit easier. Put them back on the base so that way I don't have to keep uh, touching the model and risk uh, trans transplanting uh, paint onto other parts. I'm painting the shield into a four-quarter uh, like knight shield. I figured it'd be a nice to kind of give a break it up, break up that red in that area. Okay, so here I'm using rich pewter gold, and I'm gonna start going over all of the gold areas. So that's all the chain, uh, all of the uh, the dangling ornaments, as well as the little skulls. Uh, off camera. I went ahead and did all the arms and the backpack as well, just doing the exact same thing that I'm doing in this vi uh, this part of the video. Uh, I just pretty much transferred the same uh, for the arms. Make sure I'm getting the little skull that's right in the middle of the wings and the little skulls on the side uh, part of the uh, hip plates. Okay, so I'm going to be using Rhinox Hide 
and I'm going to be basing all of the uh, parchment uh, parts of the model and there's actually quite a few of them I'm just again paying attention to each of the little straps that are hanging down and I'm doing this also on the arm uh, as well I want to make sure I get a nice solid base coat for all of the, uh, the parchment. It really helps with the later steps. Okay, so here I'm using Goleman's Flesh Contrast Paint and I'm painting it over all of the gold. And that's going to give it a nice aged uh, look to the gold. And it's going to kind of almost like as a wash. And it's going to tint the gold too, so it's not going to be so bright. It's going to be more uh, more of a brown hue. It's actually a very unnatural look. Now I'm using, a, I believe that's Morgast uh, base, onto all of the previously painted uh, brown for the parchments. This helps make those uh, parchments really pop and stand out. A lot of times I use my thumb as a uh, mini palette to kind of make sure I get the excess paint. Or if I need to uh, re-wet the tip, usually I have a small little puddle on my thumb. I was trying to find an elusive paint at this point. So here I have, uh, I believe it's a uh, Stegigon uh, green uh, paint base. And I'm using this to paint all of the, uh, the black areas as a, uh, as a highlight. And it actually came out looking really good. It had a really nice contrast with the red of the armor. But it didn't stick out so much, so much like, a, like a sore thumb, for instance. I'm just doing that edge highlight on parts of the, the Aquila, as well as the top of the shield and back of the uh, tall bird as well. Again, I'm going back over Rich Beater Gold over the areas after the wash had dried and just kind of touching up the top areas of the gold and uh, kind of really kind of bringing it back out. Now I'm doing the Fire Dragon or Fire uh, Bright over the highlighted areas, just the edges of the armor 
just give him a real quick little edge highlight. This really makes the model pop. But don't overdo it, just do it in certain little areas. I'll end up gluing this together later. I just wanted to put this together to make sure that everything was uh, syncing up. So here I'm actually going to be using blue tech and I'm going to be making a, uh, uh, a nice and shotted case for the entire arm except for the sword because I'm about to airbrush, airbrush the sword into a uh, power weapon. So I'm getting the airbrush ready with white primer Again, putting about one or two drops of uh, thinner in there and priming the sword white. Then I'm going to be using Vallejo Mecha Fluorescent Green. It's a really, really nice and vibrant green. So the next steps I'm going to do, because I want to put a uh, nice little sheen uh, glow to it, is I'm going to go back to, well I was actually going to try yellow here, but I'm actually going to end up with a white primer. And I'm just going to spray a little dot in the middle of the sword and then go back with the Mecha Vallejo yellow fluorescent paint and I'm going to paint essentially in the middle of the blade and it gives it a really nice green yellow glow. So here I'm actually using the white. The white has a little bit of the yellow tint but that's okay because again it's just going to be going over with some yellow. After giving it a moment to dry, you just take all of the putty right off. You can actually use the putty to touch the putty and kind of rip the putty off with, with putty. So it's really easy. It doesn't leave any residue. Alright, so at this point we're going to start on the head as well as the shield. So I'm using Goleman's, or I'm sorry, Dark Oath Flesh with a little bit of contrast. Medium. give it a real quick almost like wash and I'm mostly focusing on the recessed areas because that's where I want the uh, the shadows to be and here I'm actually using skeleton horde contrast paint 
and I'm just going to be going over all of parts of the skeleton as well as the um, banners and uh, parchment areas. Also paying attention to the shield and using the exact same, but being careful that I'm not getting it all over the white. So I'm going to use Agrax Earthshade and a very fine brush and I'm going to essentially going to be drawing in all the little recesses of the shield with the wash just to darken up those areas as well as the rivets. And also where the, uh, the golden uh, part of the relic, I'm doing all the basing of the relic as well to essentially pre-shadow the gold that's gonna be painted there. So here I'm using uh, Keith's Keith Flesh and I'm uh, just going over with a nice light coat and uh, painting, painting all the areas like the top of the head, the bridge of the nose, the top of the lip, all the areas where a highlight would be. I'm using a little bit of Mummy's Robe from Army Painter to essentially go over, uh, mixed in with the flesh, 50-50 uh, ratio to create the highlights for the face. I'm using uh, Malgras, uh, our Malgras uh, base color to go over all of the banners. The same color that we used in the past for all the other uh, parchment. I'll have all of these paints listed in the uh, description down below. Going back to gold and coloring in the uh, hourglass. And I'm also painting all of the edges of the shield with the same uh, gold. Now I'm paying attention where I'm painting and staying away from the recessed uh, crevice that we had just painted uh, in with the wash. Because I want that to be a nice indicator of a transition. Letting it dry for a moment. Now I'm using a uh, terminus stone as a uh, the dry paint for a dry brush, and I'm just doing a real quick uh, brushing over the skeleton and parchment. Also making sure to pay attention to the shield as well. Now I'm going to back over with the golem in the flesh over the gold, doing the same thing that we did on the regular uh, marine armor. And this is just going to tie that gold in together to make it look aged and gives a really, really nice color to it. Okay, I'm taking a little bit of uh, Evil Sun Scarlet and painting in the your seal wax as well as the inside of the uh, hourglass and I'm also catching the hand that's on top of the shield holding it a little 
little bit of the mummy's robe from Mummy Painter and just giving it a real quick highlight onto the model or parts of the, uh, the bone to kind of give it a little more of the aged white look like it's been in there for a bit. And also touching up the parchment as well. Really, really makes those uh, parchment pieces pop out. Doing the same for all the parts on the model that need it. chevron onto the, uh, the tilt plate. Touching up the back of the shield, I'm just going to paint it just straight black with the Abaddon black. Switching up for a larger brush at this point. Still paying attention to the edges, I don't want to paint over the gold. Doing a little bit of a touch up where the hand meets the, uh, the arm socket. Now for the head, I'm going back to abandoned black and uh, the white as well to paint the eyes. I know it's probably too small to see at this point, but I'm going in with the black and painting the bottom of the black carapace underneath the head as well as the attachments for the helmet and behind the head using a very fine brush at this point. that's finished take all of the glue tack off get some super glue and then I'm gonna be gluing it into its little socket and it's done I really want to thank you everyone for watching this and uh, this model was a blast to paint. Uh, this is a new format that I'm trying to do. It took me a long time to not just paint this but film it and edit it. Uh, so please if you can, uh, if you like the video, give me a like, um, subscribe and make sure you turn on the little bell for notifications. I will try to get more uh, videos out as, well, as fast as I can. But I also want to make sure that I do them at a very good level. So again, thank you everyone and happy, happy painting. Alright, bye.